So what's new in the second data release compared to the first data release is the publication of astrophysical parameters. And this has been made possible by the uh, broadband integrated photometry uh, from Gaia. Um, so you'll find in the catalog, there are astrophysical parameters for about 161 uh, million sources, brighter than about 17th magnitude. Um, but not all of these have all parameters. Now, these parameters have been derived using very limited information. So we have effective temperatures for about 160 million stars. These have been estimated uh, using the three broad bands, so the BP, the RP, and the G band. Uh, but these are quite degenerate with one another. So effectively, we only have two bands, so one color. And temperature has been estimated using an empirical training scheme. So stars with temperatures estimated using ground-based spectra um, with the algorithms trained, though, on uh, the Gaia photometry. So we have temperatures for about 160 million stars. And for, for some of these, we also have estimated extinctions. Now, extinction is uh, very difficult to get or virtually impossible to get using only the color um, from these three bands because it's highly degenerate uh, with the temperature. And you can see this if you look in, uh, if you look in figure two of the paper uh, that we've published, which is page four. Um, and this shows the locus of the, uh, of, of, uh, of the colors, the G versus uh, GRP versus GBP minus G. Um, and you can see that there is quite a strong correlation with temperature, but a much poorer correlation uh, with extinction. And so in order to be able to estimate the extinctions in addition to the temperature, we've had to use the parallaxes as well. So the, the signal we're actually picking up when we report an extinction is actually the, the faintening or the dimming, if you will, of the star due to the uh, intervening dust. So we report both an extinction and a reddening, but in both cases, the signal is due to the dimming of the star from the dust. And as I said, we get that using the three band photometry and the parallaxes. Um, the other two parameters we report are luminosity and radius. And luminosity comes quite simply just using the apparent magnitude and the parallax uh, and a bolometric correction, um, uh, which was derived using the, the temperatures that we, that we derive. But when we do this, we actually assume zero extinction. So it's important to realize the luminosities reported are not assuming the extinction we report, it's assuming zero extinction. But of course, you can easily adjust that uh, reported luminosity um, using any extinction that you think may be better than the one we report uh, or better than zero. And then finally, the radius just comes from the luminosity and the temperature uh, using Stefan uh, Boltzmann law, and again, assuming uh, zero, zero extinction. So really the key thing to, to, to realize about these uh, estimates is that they're based on extremely limited information, um, three broad bands, which are degenerate and a parallax. And so we've had to make very strong assumptions. For example, we assume all sources are single stars, so there's no source classification. Uh, we ignore binarity. Um, we essentially assume solar metallicity. We have no gravity sensitivity. Um, now, it's obvious you could do much, much better to estimate stellar parameters if you used additional data, infrared photometry, spectroscopy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the goal of this work done within the DPAC is to get stellar parameters estimated using only the Gaia data. And this way we can report a you know, very large 160 million sources um, set of parameters over the whole sky on a homogenous system. Um, and this is really intended as, as, as a baseline for comparison um, if you want to do much better estimates uh, or obtain much better estimates using uh, other, guide, other data in addition to the Gaia data. And it can also be used, of course, for doing some kind of, some kind of source selection. Um, but of course, because of these strong assumptions that we've had to make and very limited data and the degeneracy and the extinction and the temperature, the overall accuracy is not that high. Uh, the global accuracies we've estimated in temperature are something like 325 Kelvin. In extinction, it's nearly half a magnitude. So individually, the extinctions are not terribly useful. Uh, reddening is about um, a quarter of a magnitude. And luminosity and radius are about 15%, 10% respectively for, the, for the, the stars that we keep in the catalog. So one thing to realize, and this is explained in the paper in more detail, we've actually done quite a lot of filtering to remove uh, the, uh, the most... Uh, uh, the, the poorest results um, based on various um, uh, validation and quality analyses we've done. Um, one particular thing to be aware of concerning the extinctions is that the extinction, uh, the uncertainty of the extinction is very large and it can even be larger than the measurement itself. But the estimates that we give in the catalog are all constrained to be positive. Um, so 
this, this means essentially that when you when you have a measurement of extinction, it can because it cannot go negative. Uh, if the true extinction is, is zero, uh, then we will almost always have an apparent uh, positive bias. And this makes these uh, results a little bit tricky to use. Uh, the, the essential problem is, is that the true likelihood function, because it's positively constrained, is not a Gaussian. And in fact, a truncated Gaussian is, is more appropriate. Um, but this often means that the reported value at face value uh, may uh, have show an apparent bias. Uh, but the actual bias is quite small, and so you can combine results, uh, and the precision in these results will improve uh, due to the central limit theorem. But you have to be a little bit careful how you do this, particularly for, for the lowest and the highest extinctions. Uh, and we explain uh, in, in the appendix E of the paper um, how to do this. Um, I should point out that in addition to the five parameters we report, we also report um, uncertainty estimates on these. And because of the positivity constraint, um, actually for all the parameters, of course, uh, physically, they all have to be positive. Um, the uh, the uncertainty report is actually, we actually report two values. It's an asymmetric uh, confidence interval. Um, and so you need to uh, treat that uh, appropriately. Uh, but it is only really a rough estimate of, of, of the precision uh, that we get. So in figure 10 of the paper, you get some idea of the uh, uh, precision of the temperature estimates uh, that we achieve. So this is showing the um, PREAM, PREAM is the name of our software module, which is estimating temperatures, uh, of the PREAM temperature estimates as a function of literature test temperature uh, estimates. And this is essentially where we derive our global uncertainty of, as you see on the plot, 324 Kelvin with a bias of about minus 29 Kelvin. Uh, but this is only uh, for this, of course, sample of validation data. Um, um, the other thing I should point out is that the temperatures we estimate uh, are only lying between 3,000 and 10,000 Kelvin. So any star uh, which is outside this temperature range will have its temperature thrown into this range. So we can get a bias for stars which are truly hotter or truly cooler uh, than this range. Um, in terms of the radius and luminosity results, uh, this is summarized uh, in figure 36. If you look at the top panel, this is showing the fractional uncertainty in our estimated radius as a function of the literature radius uh, for different um, literature samples. And you can see here some evidence for a, for a negative bias in our estimates. The top right plot, panel B, shows the same, but now as a function of, of the literature temperature. And the bottom panel is the same, but now for, for luminosities, uh, where again, we have a slight uh, negative bias. And uh, the, the reasons for this are explained uh, in the paper. And perhaps the most uh, interesting result is, is, is in figure 19. This is showing um, color magnitude diagrams. If you look first at the top left panel, panel A, this is showing the um, the observable on the vertical axis, which is equal to the absolute magnitude plus the extinction uh, as a function of color. So it's essentially the HR diagram if you assume zero extinction. And you can see it's extremely broad. Uh, it's a density plot here. There's a lot of uh, uh, extremely large number of sources here and not much in the way of features. And this is because, of course, we actually have quite a range of extinctions. Um, which is washing out the features that you're normally used to in the HRD. Um, if we use our extinctions to de-redden this on both axes, so de-redden and de-extinct, if you will, you get the panel in the top right, which is B. And this is remarkably different. You see an awful lot of features. The main sequence is very distinct, the red clump, the red giant branch. You see the white dwarf sequence, uh, uh, perhaps even more distinctly than before. You also see a number of artifacts in this diagram. Um, which again are explained in the paper. They're partly a result of the training sample, partly a result of the uh, inherent degeneracies between extinction and temperature, which we obviously cannot uh, remove given the limited data. Uh, the bottom two panels show the same thing, but now restricting our sample just to stars with higher parallax precisions. So parallax uncertainty is less than 20%. And you can see also this leads to an improvement uh, further because by doing this, we actually get better uh, extinction estimates, because remember, we actually use the parallax uh, to estimate the extinction. Um, an important point to realize is that, um, you know, while we have limited information, the uh, the extinction we're deriving um, is, is not at all well correlated with the color. So it really is a unique uh, signal we're picking out. This is shown in one of the figures in the paper. Uh, but the best way to show this is a beautiful all sky extinction map, um, which is also uh, shown in the paper. We identify uh, specific regions in this, such as uh, lupus region, uh, chameleon region, and various other uh, 
objects, obviously the LMC and the SMC, Omega Sen, Pleiades, these all these all stick out. And zooms of these uh, really showing that we're picking up a lot of uh, well-known um, uh, dust and star forming regions uh, in the galaxy, which is quite a good validation of our of our extinction. As I say, this is not just a color signal because the the, the color is actually very poorly correlated with extinction because we're using the parallax to, in addition to the colors to get the or in addition to the magnitudes to uh, to estimate extinction.